mums out there or parents out there when your child sleeps don't you miss them so much because i miss my little one hello what i said about this book loud proud lenny the lion <laughs> that smile and then you open it up one day a lion called lenny woke up to find a mouse on his back hey guys welcome back to my channel and if you are new here my name is amina as you may or may not know i have a nine month old son yes i do keep it a little bit on the down low um, but i do have a nine month old son who takes up 99.9 percent .9 of my time um, and i've had a few questions about what i'm teaching him and like how am i educating him now he's a nine month old so you know he's not doing his stats or anything um, these are his formative years and these are the years where he is picking up information and learning like a sponge. I'm aware, I am aware of the things that I do to try to um, encourage and try to help him learn certain things and on top of that he has been, he was born in a pandemic and so there's a lot of key skills that he is not necessarily acquiring through the natural ways that he would have through meeting people and through you know going out and going on holiday and like just being in an environment that's different to the one place that he's in all the time so I, I am a bit more I guess active and proactive in trying to ensure that I provide him the best experience possible with the you know in the situation that we're currently in so this is by no means an exhaustive list but it is sort of based on research and it is based on sort of child psychology and sort of what I know I'm not a child psychologist but I am someone who loves to read research and I'm a scientist so these are things that I kind of have read along the way have read through you know being a teacher through being in education myself before I had a child and sort of things I always knew that I wanted to implement um, when I had a child. I also look at my parents as a huge example because I know that they did an amazing job with us and so I've thought about the things that they did when they were raising us and I've tried to implement those things too. We'll have a mirror in the house, I have multiple um, and so I've used the mirror so much um, to teach him about the self and the, the other. So every single time we pass a mirror from when he was tiny, I would always be like, hello, hello, I'd kind of wave, I'd say bye-bye, we're walking past the mirror. I'd use the mirror as a way for him to look at his reflection um, and as a way for him to kind of interact with what he knows is him and what he knows is me, but not the person that he's holding at that time. And I'd repeat this all the time. So every single time we pass a mirror, bear in mind there's like five mirrors in this small, small house, um, I'd always say hello till today and he's nine months old and now that he when he sees a mirror he always smiles he always finds it really exciting um, and his first laugh was actually in the mirror so he was three months old and I was like in the mirror like saying hi and then he started laughing so it just goes to show how important something as basic as looking at his own reflection was for teaching him um, a key kind of communication skill to find it really handy for when he's getting his nappy changed um, so we have like a massive mirror on the side of our bed so when he was changing when I used to change his nappy not now now he doesn't sit still but when <laughs> before he was six months old um, when I changed his nappy he'd look in the mirror so he'd look at himself and look at what I'm doing but through the mirror and he wouldn't move at all he would just let me do my thing while he's looking in the mirror so if you can get a mirror next to you when you're changing a nappy fantastic <laughs> Second technique is dialogue. Now, dialogue, it sounds so basic, but narrating every single thing you do. Now, when I say I've, dri I've driven myself up the wall, just, just narrating everything. Um, things like, I'm changing your nappy. Look, this is a nappy. Um, this is your wipes. These are your, th just narrating every single thing you do. Okay, I'm changing your nappy now. Using, for I say not formal language, but using your normal tone. Baby speak isn't great for kids um i mean there's different arguments about it but i've tended to speak to him as i would speak obviously a bit more in a bit of a different tone i'm not going to speak to him in a formal way but i speak to him just normally in normal sentences i don't i've never done goo gaga like that so one thing that i used to do was when i was cleaning in the kitchen or when i was cooking i'd put him in his like little bouncer and i'll show him every single thing i was doing so i was like here's a carrot i'm gonna cut it now and i'll cut the carrot and then i'll say do you want to hold the carrot i'll give it to him to hold i'll let him touch the carrot have a little feel have a little bite and then i will obviously like a whole carrot this was like when he was like two or three months so really really small anything that i was doing i'd narrate every single thing to him to the point where I actually went insane <laughs> but I found that it was really helpful because again he 
I'm the only person, well, me and my husband, we're the only people that he is seeing. So it's really important for him to pick up language um, through that. Another thing that we've done is we haven't actually allowed him to have any screen time. Obviously, he has seen the TV, he has seen our phones, he has seen our laptops, like that's impossible for him to avoid. But we haven't put on a, sh a show that's for him and like let him sit in front of it. I mean, each to their own. I mean, this is not a judgment. You are free to do what you want and I'm free to have my opinion as well. It is, it is recommended that kids under the age of two have no screen time at all. Um, so that's something that I am trying my best to do and so far have been successful. But again, like I said, there may come a time when I might have to, but right now um, I'm trying my best to not give him any screen time at all. But one thing that I am trying to do is to encourage him to listen to the things that I listen to again to pick up language. The second other video is sponsored by Skillshare. As you guys know, Skillshare has kindly continued to partner with me for 2021 and I'm so grateful for that and they really do support this channel. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Um, and they offer so many different classes including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing and so much more. I've mentioned Skillshare on this channel so much, especially when it comes to videos to do with productivity, um, running a business, um, emails, things like that, where I've wanted to learn something new and expand my horizons. I the classes are quite short so they fit your schedule i don't tend to have more than sort of 10 15 minutes so it's quite nice that i can watch like a bit of a class here a bit of a class there and kind of keep it moving and one thing that i like to do is i like to play that when my son is around and i know that he's picking up those language skills and i know that he's listening to someone else speak which is really really important one of the classes that i picked up recently is this one about confidence and i was mentioning on my instagram recently that one of the things that I feel like I need to work on this year is my confidence. And I think you'll be surprised that I'm saying that, but I do feel like it's something that I want to work on, being a lot more sort of self-assertive and sort of confident in myself and what I have to offer. This class is about confidence for creatives, five exercises to grow your confidence and self-care. Um, and it's by Eugenia Washington. And she really goes through a couple of ways to raise your confidence including creating a playlist. So a list of songs that make you feel good about yourself. I love that it's being addressed by a woman as well because a lot of the time these topics are touched upon by men and we have completely different challenges. And for the annual subscription, it's only less than $10 a month. And the first thousand to click on my link down below will get a free trial of the premium membership to explore your creativity. So like I said, they have so many classes and every single time I go on, I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. I love that. I play it in the background when I'm doing things and I let Sofian listen to it because it's good for him to kind of hear voices in the background apart from mine. <laughs> The third way that I'm teaching my son is from the environment. So one of the things that I like to do, especially now that we can't do it much else, is to go for walks. And what I do is I put him in a baby carrier. I have the Ergo Baby Embrace. I put him in the baby carrier and now that he's a bit older and a bit stronger, I turn him around so he's world facing. And what this does is it allows him to sort of look around and learn from the, the movements and the kind of things that are going on around him that he doesn't usually get to see at home. It could be anything from hearing sounds, from seeing other faces, from seeing like, we don't have any pets, but I want him to be confident around dogs and to be confident around like ducks and other animals. So I'll go to like the local park, we have like a lake and we have swans and I let him just take, I just stand there and I just let him look and take everything in. And he always looks so intrigued. And like I said, this is something that I'm struggling with a little bit because of the situation that we're in. He hasn't seen many faces. He hasn't, you know, been around other people. And so it's imperative that I'm providing him with even if it's just like five, 10 minutes a day where he's looking out the window or like I'm just pointing to things that are not the same, same things that he's seeing every day, like picking up new colors and new sounds. Um, I really want him to be aware of all these things. And so just learning from his environment and the nature that's around him is something that I absolutely have tried to do a lot. <laughs> is from language sounds, so different language sounds. Now, me and my husband speak different languages, we're from different countries altogether. So it's been a bit, I guess, challenging in the sense that we obviously don't have a shared language. But what I really want him to learn is, I want him to learn um, as many languages as possible. Uh, in particular, obviously English, but he'll learn that regardless. But I do want him to learn Arabic. Um, so my husband speaks Arabic and I kind of understand it, um, basic 
basic understanding. So one of the things I've been doing is been, I have been playing um, on YouTube the Arabic alphabet um, and I play the English one as well but not as much because he'll learn that regardless but I play the Arabic alphabet just in the background so again I don't really let him watch it but I just play it in the background to get him used to the sounds, the different sounds that the throat needs to make and that the you know different parts of the mouth needs to make um, just to get him used to it. I used to play it a lot more. The re as of recently I've kind of got a bit lazy with it so I need to pick that up again but one of the things I really want to do is put him in Arabic school when he gets old enough like not even too far from now and when I say Arabic school I don't mean um, Quranic school I mean like an Arabic language school where he is learning the Arabic language um, because if he learns the Arabic language he'll learn the Quran regardless so that's one of the things I really hope to do um, or even to have like an Arabic tutor that can come to the house and to teach him um, Arabic, the language, not the Quran. He'll learn that regardless, I'll teach that to him. But I want him to learn the language. That's one of the things I really wish that I knew. Um, and so I want to provide him with that as early as possible. Also research shows that bilingual children have better memories when they grow older as well. Um, and so it's for me, it's really important that I provide him with the best. And if that means that I want him, I want him to learn as many languages as possible. I want him to learn a European language as well. So hopefully when he gets a bit older, I'll definitely push him towards, I say push, encourage him. Don't say push. I'll encourage him towards um, doing like French or Spanish and we'll try to do like holidays and go there as much as possible to get him used to like, you know, the language and the sounds and the culture. Um, Cause I really think having multi, like having languages that you know and understand is such a beautiful skill to have. Um, and I really wish that I could speak like more languages because I really don't speak that many. Next is reading books and this is kind of again a given, I'm sure we all do this with kids, but reading books. Now I've got a few examples of the books that I um, have picked out for him. Now the books that I've picked out for him at this stage are just books that I think will provide him with I guess the colours and the interest for books. There are so many books that I've loved as a child, um, like Six Dinner Seared and like The Hungry Caterpillar, but I feel like it's a little bit too early for him. I don't want him to buy it for him and he just like rips it up. I'd rather get it for him a bit later on when he understands like how to, like reading is a thing. So for now, I just want to get him books that entice him and read it genuinely. When I pick up a book, he sits as still as he's ever sat. If he's crying, if he's agitated, if he's tired, as soon as I pick up a book, he has the biggest grin on his face and he will just sit still and let you read to him and that's because I've been doing I've been doing this from day one so this one I picked up randomly from like Lidl from Lidl it has like this puppet thing I picked two of, I got two of them I got this one the lion and I got a tiger one if I show you he's asleep now but if I show you his face when he sees this and then the other books that I bought because I, I saw them um, online are these set of three books from Harriet Evans and Jackie Lee. Um, so these are the books. This one's called This Is Crab, this one's called This Is Owl, and this one's called This Is Frog. And the reason why I like them, and I think he's a bit young for them, to be completely honest, um, but I, I mean, I still read them to him, but he's a little bit young to completely uh, interact with it. They are, so this one is a flapping, tapping, clapping, interactive book. So I'll give you an example of like what it does. So it says, welcome to the world, blah, blah. Turn the page and I'll introduce you. So we do the thing, we turn the page and then it says, owl, wake up. And then you kind of like knock on owl's tummy. Try tickling owl's tummy to wake him up. So I'll like tickle him, right? And then we, we wake him up. Oh, one eye's open. And it says, no, we need both eyes. And I feel like he's a bit too young right now to understand anything. So he just tries to grab it and I grab it off him because I don't want him to tear it. Um, but yeah, so for example, like, there's this bit here where it says, can you tilt the page to help Owl reach Beetle? And you kind of go, oop, oop, oop. And then the next page, he's like knocked off. <laughs> and it says, flap the pages together. So you go, flap, flap, flap. And then the next page, he's like flying away. And this is, can you flap it harder? You flap it harder. So he's a bit too young, basically. But I love them. And if you have a child who's I mean, it's never too early, but if you have a child who's like one, two, you can introduce something like this to them. But it's the kind of book that you need to, you read with them. Whereas this, I just let him like play with it. But this needs monitoring, otherwise you end up with all the pages torn and on the floor. Books allow a child's vocabulary to um, 
blossom and um, I was looking at some research and the researchers looked at the correlation between language acquisition and like um, financial status it wasn't you would think it'd be you know someone who is middle class or upper class not that class system really exists but you know what I mean like someone who's who's a bit higher may have better language actually that wasn't the fact what they found was children who were exposed to books as much as possible um, picked up vocabulary very quickly and so were able to articulate themselves better and had, lang had had better language acquisition and I think that's something that I am bearing in mind and so I'm just reading to him as much as possible um, and just making sure that he not it's not that he can understand right now but I just want him to enjoy the book and so when he gets a bit older it's not a thing where I'm forcing him to read or and I'll even read with him as well so I'll just like sit down next to him read and let him read as well so he kind of sees like mommy's doing it um maybe i should do it too the next is through songs now songs are a really good way to um firstly kids love babies love to hear your voice so singing to them is great and it also helps them like like a lullaby it's really nice for them to hear your voice nice for them to hear sort of things being sung they feel a lot more at ease and comfortable but younger i'd sing everything i'd be like here's a carrot it's going in here carrot 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 and i'd like sing everything until i got sick of my own voice um and i could tell that when i when i sang he'd like he'd have the biggest grin on his face um and yeah so singing is just a, an easy way it doesn't have to be a an actual song it's just an easy just sing whatever it is that you are doing <laughs> um, and you'll annoy everyone in the household but your child is happy so that's okay the last method of how i'm teaching my son is through feeling and touching um so i think i mentioned this earlier that we didn't really buy that many toys for him i don't i mean kids get bored of toys very quickly they you know they find them exciting in the beginning they'll play with them endlessly and then dropped they they won't touch them if you gave it to them a thousand times I'm talking about like what we give him so we just give him items around the house so what's his favorite what's his favorite touchy thing to have like boxes what else anything, um, that, makes noise. anything that makes noise like wrappers um like an empty like jar empty crisp packet Cardboard. empty yeah cardboard cereal but like literally anything that makes a noise I can, I'll give it to him and he'll be so amazed by it and it's free and it's easy and then he gets bored of it and then we move on to the next thing so yeah he's here by the way he's here. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah so that's another way that I've been teaching him like just being giving him like touchy-feely things um, and getting him exposed to the different textures that they that exist in the world because not everything is a soft cuddly toy so I hope that was helpful guys I hope that was helpful. I hope that gave you a bit of an insight about what I'm teaching my son. Um, all of the things that I mentioned are free. They're all things that... <laughs> oh, oh. Things that are free, they all exist naturally in the world. And so you don't need to spend money and financial resources to teach your child. All you need to do is be present. And that is, that is the most important thing. If you probably look at the list that I just gave you, 99% of them are the fact that you are there and that you're present and that you're with them and that you're interacting with them that is what they want they don't care about the cuddly toy they care about you being on the floor with them um so hope that was helpful let me know if you enjoyed this kind of video is a bit different but i know it's been requested by a few mums that are that follow me and um, so hope that you enjoyed seeing what i've been teaching him up to the age of like about nine months or so um and don't forget to subscribe to see more from me and also shine hello you just woke up Oh, I always miss him when he sleeps. Wait. Mums out there, or parents out there, when your child sleeps, don't you miss them so much? Because I miss my little one. Hello! I was talking about you. Okay, should you take a thumbnail? That's a good one. <laughs> Alright, let me just take a thumbnail because my scarf. What I said about this book. Loud, proud, Lenny the Lion! <laughs> See that smile? And then you open it up. One day, a lion called Lenny woke up to find a mouse on his back. Hi! Clap your hands. Clap, clap, clap. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Clap, clap, clap. Clap your hands. Clap, clap, clap. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle.